we're gonna make your floor plans look really nice. In this video, we've got five tips for rendering architectural floor plans. Let's get into it. In this video, I'll be referring to my Studio 7 project, which was the environment studio. In particular, we'll be looking at the floor plan I created because a lot of people will ask me about this and I wanna take the five biggest things away from this that you can apply to any type of floor plan. As mentioned in the previous videos of this playlist, which is the floor plan course, there are different types of floor plans. There are sketch design floor plans. There are diagrammatic floor plans. There are construction floor plans. There are developed design floor plans, which is what this is. This is a floor plan you would show to a client or in my case, the teacher, just to show them the different programs that are in your building, in your project, and you know perhaps what materials there are and how the spaces look and feel. There's definitely no construction detailing or documenting of services or anything like that in this drawing because it is a developed design drawing. And that's gonna lead into the first tip. Tip number one is to know what kind of floor plan you're drawing and to adapt to that. As mentioned in the previous videos, there are different types of floor plans and they all show different things. Each type of floor plan has a different purpose to the other. For example, there's no need to show construction detailing in a developed design plan. The purpose of this plan here is to show how the spaces work and the materials, all those things I said before. And so you wouldn't show the detailing of the walls and showing uh, what kind of materials are used and how they go together because that's not the purpose of this drawing. And on the flip side, if you're doing a construction drawing, there's no need to show loose furniture because that's not the purpose of that drawing. So that's the first tip to consider what kind of floor plan you're drawing and to adapt to that and only show what you need to show. And that leads into tip number two, which is hierarchy. The best floor plans are clear and easy to read. And the way that you can create floor plans that are clear and easy to read, that are coherent and have clarity to them is by using hierarchy different line weights, different opacities for things. For example, at the first glimpse of looking at this drawing, it's not super cluttered. It's pretty minimalistic, I guess you could say. And probably what stands out the most are the walls. They are the thickest thing, they are at full opacity and that's been done on purpose. As I've seen a lot over my years at architecture school, it's very common for students to show everything on their floor plans at the same line weight, at the same opacity, and it can really make the drawing look cluttered. So there are two ways to control hierarchy. And in Photoshop, this would be by changing line weights and by changing opacity. To simplify things, you really wanna show your line weights in three different styles. You want a thick line weight, you want a medium line weight, and a thin line weight. Now, considering that floor plans are to scale, your walls are gonna have a set thickness. And these thicknesses are going to be indicative of the thickness of the real wall. For example, if your wall is 300 millimeters thick and you've drawn it to scale, then it's going to be, say, in a one to 100 drawing, I, th I believe three mils thick. I had to just do some quick maths there, but that should be correct. So therefore, walls that are load bearing and structural are gonna have a thicker, thickness than, or a thicker line weight than say the interior walls, which are just um, for looks or to divide spaces. They aren't carrying the load of the structure. Therefore, these interior walls, as you can see in this drawing, are a lot thinner than the exterior walls that are carrying the load. And so that's probably the most important thing to get right in these drawings. If you get the wall thicknesses right, it makes a huge difference. If all your thicknesses of the walls are at the exact same line weight, there is no hierarchy. It's very difficult to tell what's an interior wall and what's an external wall. So number two, as I said earlier, there's also opacity. And this is something that you change usually afterwards in Photoshop, but this would be more than likely changing the opacity of things that aren't cut through. If you watched the first few videos in this course, you would have seen how floor plans have a cut line. And what this means is that everything that's being cut through is going to be shown at full opacity everything below that cut line is going to have less opacity depending on how far away from that cut line it is. Typically a cut line for a floor plan is at 1200 millimeters above the ground floor. So then if you have a bench that's 600 millimeters high, it's probably going to be shown at 50% opacity. However, all of the walls that are being cut through they're going to be at full opacity at 100%. Opacity is a really easy way to change and clear up your drawings so that it's not super cluttered. I also lower the opacity of things that aren't super important. For example, the trees. I could have shown the trees at full opacity, but they would have been way too dominant in the drawing. It would have taken away from the important things. And so I dropped the opacity of these down to 
either 10 or 15%. They are very, very light, but that's fine because you can still see them. And this is something that my teacher was talking about in my studio. The biggest thing that I took away from that was to really drop the opacity of, of everything that's not important. It's still there. It's still showing that information, but you don't need it to be dominating the drawing. By controlling the hierarchy of your floor plans, you're going to have much more clearer and legible drawings. And this is controlled by controlling line weights and the opacity. Next up, we've got color palettes. My suggestion is to choose one to three different colors and to stick with them consistently across your floor plans in fact, across all of your other drawings, across your presentation board, and to keep it consistent. Again, this is just about making your drawing easy to read and clear and legible. You can see in my drawing, I've chosen pink and green. And the reason I've chosen these are because they are complementary to each other. And if you want to find out what some complementary colors are, you can go to Adobe Color, which is a website where you can choose your main color, and I chose this pink, and then you can choose different complementary colors. You can choose other base colors and monochromatic colors and all these different things, but you can create different color swatches and a color palette for your drawings by choosing complementary colors on Adobe Color. Most professional architects in professional practice, they have color swatches that they use for every single drawing in every single project they have. And it's their brand colors, I guess you could say. This is always going to be one to four colors at the most, but they are going to be complementary colors that are thoughtfully chosen. And so why don't, as a student, we do that ourselves? For example, I've just chosen two or three colors being this pink, green, and I think I had a gold color as well. But these were colors I used across my entire presentation board for Studio 7. And now I've just added those swatches to my library and I can just choose these colors for every project I do in the future now. In fact, these colors are now pretty much my brand, which is actually really cool because then when someone sees your work, they're going to know it's your work. It's going to be your style. And by creating this template for yourself, by creating different color swatches that you can use in every project, you're going to be saving time. You don't have to think about what colors you're going to use, and you're going to have a perfect set of colors that you can just pick and play with for all of your drawings, all of your projects. My next tip for you, tip three, is to find inspiration. For this project, I was searching through Pinterest nonstop, trying to find good looking floor plans. And to be honest, I was just trying to find a style that I could mimic. When I was creating this floor plan, all I had to do was keep looking back at my Pinterest board and find these floor plans that all kind of have the same style. And I could just find and pick what was really working well with them and I could ignore what was not working so well with them. But by searching around, finding good looking floor plans as inspiration, as precedence to my, my own floor plan, it made it really easy just to create a good looking floor plan because I'm going off of something that's already been successful. There's no need to reinvent the wheel as some might say. My fourth tip was to consider what the floor plan is actually trying to show, and we've already talked about this at the start. But again, this kind of leads back then to the hierarchy thing. There's no need to show everything. You don't need to show absolutely everything that you've resolved in your project because you're gonna have other drawings anyways. You're gonna have sections and elevations to, to show things. And I think it's really important not to repeat information across drawings. A floor plan has a specific purpose. Elevations have their own specific purposes. You don't need to show, you know, the heights of the building in a floor plan drawing. That's not what it's for. So consider what the floor plan is for and consider what you're trying to show with the floor plan because it's going to be different for every single project you do and every different stage of the project you're going to do. Consider what the floor plan is for and just stick to that. Don't show things that aren't necessary. And to help you with that, tip number five would be to create a checklist for yourself where you can just tick things off as you go. This is really good for time management as well. You can create a full shopping list of everything you need to do on your drawing. You can write down that you need to add in the roof overhangs and you need to add in the trees and the furniture and the walls and you can create a single line for all of these things and then as you do them, you can just cross them off. It's really gonna help you stay on track and it's gonna help you stay motivated for doing your work because you've got a checklist of everything you need to do. You know how much you need to do. How often do we start a project and we just get so uh, frustrated, I guess, because there's just so much to do. We don't know where to start and so we just put things off. 
by having a checklist of things to do. You know what you need to get done by when, by whenever you need to get it done. And if you further want to work on this, you can then prioritize the most important things first. You can rearrange this, sh this shopping list, this checklist to have the most important things prioritized first. And you could add the dates of when you want these things done by. For example, you might want the walls and the trees and the furniture all put in by a certain date. It's really going to help you organize your project and get things done on time and it's going to help you stay motivated. I hope you guys found that video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.